His soul was brought back by a crow so he could make things right with violence. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be exploring the comic book origins of Eric Draven, otherwise known as The Crow. As with most comic book characters, there are often reimaginings and different versions to a character's past. We have chosen to primarily follow the storyline that unfolded in 1989's caliber comic series The Crow, which was expanded upon in 1994's feature film of the same name. This dark comic series focuses heavily on the themes of deep sadness, regret, and vengeance. It was created by James O'Barr, a graphic artist stricken with grief and trying to cope with the loss of his girlfriend following her tragic death due to a drunk driver. Making his first appearance in 1989's Caliber Presents No. 1, The Crow is centered on a young man named Eric, whose fortunes take a turn for the worst when his car breaks down after a day at the beach. Stranded with his fiancée Shelly in the middle of nowhere, the young lovers were approached by a gang of thugs. Confronting the gang, Eric was shot in the head. Left paralyzed, he was forced to watch helplessly as the woman he loved was raped and beaten to death. Left for dead on the side of the road, Eric was found by the police and taken to the hospital, where he finally succumbed to his injuries while muttering the phrase, The Crow said, Don't Look. Eric had been a passionate reader of poetry and literature, and had uttered those final words as he recalled a legend he had once read about. People once believed that when someone dies, a crow carries their soul to the land of the dead. But sometimes, something so bad happens that a terrible sadness is carried with it, and the soul can't rest. Then sometimes, just sometimes, the crow can bring that soul back to put the wrong things right. Exactly one year later, Eric was indeed resurrected by the same legendary supernatural forces. At first, he did not remember what had happened or who he was. Compelled to return to his old home, he slowly regained his memories of himself, his lover, and what had happened through his newfound power to learn the history of objects by simply touching them. Depressed and trying to cope with his unbearable grief, he began to cut his face and paint it white. He soon remembered his dying wish and became a merciless vigilante ready to do anything to have his revenge. Along the way, the supernatural crow that brought him back served as his guide, helping him track down his prey. This led him to track down, stalk, and kill all of the responsible gang members one by one. As time passed, he realized that he could not die from direct attack and that he was much stronger and faster than humanly possible. He could also see through the eyes of the crow, vanish without a trace, and heal any injury quite rapidly. However, his greatest weakness turned out to be the crow itself. Any injury the crow sustained would hurt Eric, and were it to die, Eric would be left completely vulnerable. Quick impression for you. Caw, caw, bang, I'm dead! As a symbol of despair, this anti-hero became an angel of death to those who deserved it. Devoid of all pity, Eric killed his victims in a manner that was equally, if not more brutal than the ways they had terrorized the innocent. <laughs> victims, aren't we all? Eventually, Eric completed his quest and returned to the afterlife in peace. This did not end the series, as many characters have come to assume the role of the crow in order to seek similar vengeance. The Eric character has also been brought back in subsequent comic reboots, with a greater emphasis on redemption rather than revenge. The Crow likewise became a movie series in 1994. That film story differed from the original source material somewhat, as Eric Draven was shown to have once been a rock musician who was thrown out of a window while his fiancée was murdered on Devil's Night just before Halloween. This film adaptation starred the late Brandon Lee, who tragically died on set following a prop gun accident while the movie was being filmed. Are you a fan of this tortured anti-hero? For more origins of your favorite comic book characters, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. They're all dead. They just don't know it yet.